In the last lesson, we talked about pressure, and I, was, I just want to remind you of a few things. So I'm going to apply a pressure to this cushion by putting my foot on it and applying a force. You'll notice the more force I apply, the greater the pressure. But it's not just force. If I use two feet, I now add more surface area of contact, which means less total pressure. So pressure depends on force and area. Less area, more pressure. More area, less pressure. If I were to stand on the mat with just part of my foot, that would create even more pressure. So less area, greater pressure. Okay, so today we want to take this a little bit farther. Just a quick reminder, snowshoes work the way they do because they have a lot of surface area. So they create a very small amount of pressure and you're less likely to break through the snow. Ice skates have a very small area and that's gonna create a lot of pressure. So if your hand was underneath, it would hurt you a lot. How do you find pressure? You just do the force normal divided by the area and the units will come out in newtons per square meter. That's called the Pascal. Oftentimes you'll see them as kilopascals. Another unit you should get used to is PSI, pounds per square inch. That's not the standard. It's not what you should use, but it's what's used in a lot of America. So be ready for PSI. Bed and nails, why is it safe? It's safe because you have a lot of nails, which means a lot of surface area. So the pressure is going to be really low and make it less likely to break through your skin. A single nail, on the other hand, is going to create a lot of pressure and that's going to bust right through your skin. So today, what we'd like to do is talk atmospheric pressure. And this is something that you guys have probably heard before, but I want to make sure you understand it fully. So what's the cause of atmospheric pressure? It's actually the weight of the air that is above you. And it seems crazy to think of air having weight but it does have weight. Gravity is pulling it down. It's got mass, it's got a gravitational field pulling on it. So this atmosphere being pulled down by the earth creates a pressure on our bodies. We don't notice this pressure because we're used to this pressure. If we could find ways of eliminating the pressure on one spot, we could see how tremendously strong this atmosphere actually is. So take a look. I got this little glass container at Ikea and it's got this really cool lid that's just a piece of plastic. And when you put the lid on here and you push down just a little bit to let some air out, then once the air is out from inside, just a little bit of air, it creates a low pressure inside and the high pressure from the atmosphere outside. And now when I hold it by the lid, the glass is perfectly safe. This lid is stuck to the glass, not by glue, not by tape, but by the strength of the atmosphere pushing down on this material. Realize that it's not just pushing down, but the atmosphere is pushing in all directions. So what I'd like to do is I'd like you to see this little suction cup. And you can see that when I try and pull it off the board, it's pretty hard to do. And what happens is when I push the suction cup on, I get rid of the air between the suction cup and the board. And now the atmosphere is pushing this suction cup against the board and I have to overcome that atmosphere to pull it off, and it's not an easy thing to do. So there's lots of ways that we can visualize and experience this pressure from the atmosphere. I'd like you to know the values, just how strong is this atmosphere that we're living under? 
Well, the standard for atmospheric pressure is 101,325 pascals, a tremendously large number. That means every square meter, so if you can imagine this thing being a meter by a meter, it would experience a force of 101,000 and change, pushing down on it from the weight of the air above. It's a tremendous amount of force. The reason we don't usually notice it is the atmosphere is right underneath pushing up also. It's pushing in all directions, okay? Atmospheric pressure, really large. It's so large that in most countries they don't use pascals, they would instead call it kilopascals. You just move the decimal point three spots and you'd have 101,325. In our country, again, for common commercial uses, science, we'd use the standard, but common commercial uses, we'd use PSI, and in PSI, it would be 14.7 pounds per square inch. What does that mean? It means if we had a square inch and we were to put something that was 14.7 pounds on that square inch, that would match the pressure from the atmosphere. Okay, so if you can see the weight of the bottle, again, this bottle is only about one pound, but there's my square inch and here's my bottle on top. That's creating about one PSI. 14 of those, which would be almost two gallons, pushing down on that one little spot would give us an equivalent to atmospheric pressure, which we experience every darn day. Oftentimes in meteorology, if you're looking at weather maps, the National Weather Service or other weather agencies, they will give their pressure in millibars and sometimes if you're just trying to communicate how strong the atmosphere is to someone who doesn't know science, you'll describe it in terms of atmospheres. So our normal pressure is one atmosphere. And if I push down on this, the pressure inside of this is now less than an atmosphere. It might be like 0.9 atmospheres, okay? If you had a thing that was two atmospheres, that's twice as strong as our atmosphere. So a bunch of different ways of measuring atmospheric pressure.